Hello and welcome back to Hot Take here on No Bullshit, where we review the latest movies and give you our hot take on them. Today's topic is called Hunter Killer, starring Gerard Butler. This action-packed, military-themed thriller came out over the weekend and the critics are really giving it a hard time. But the audience has a different story to tell. Audiences seem to really like it, and I myself enjoyed it. So today we're going to talk about why the critics are getting the movie wrong, here on Hot Take. In short, basically, this isn't a movie for critics at all. This is a big, blockbuster, popcorn-like movie that's a real crowd pleaser. It's not super artistic or pushy of narratives or doesn't have a slow person in it or some kind of minority getting hurt or anything. This is just a good old fashioned action packed military based thing. It's got politics. It's got some Cold War themes. It's got missiles and submarines and all kinds of cool stuff. It's a fun movie that people will like, but obviously the critics aren't a big fan, but I wouldn't trust those reviews if you're interested in something like this. Hunter Killer is unapologetically over the top and sometimes even cliched and a bit campy, but it's not too much. It doesn't go too far and it's not too comedic either. It takes itself pretty seriously and it does a good job of telling its very dramatic story. I went and seen the movie with very low expectations and I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. It was very enjoyable and much better than I thought. Again, it's especially interesting if you like military stuff, if you like government stuff and all kinds of submarine and other things that are in the movie. There's even a covert ops team. That brings me to the story summary for the movie. Hunter Killer's story summary basically goes like this. There's an American submarine off the coast of Russia at the beginning of the film. It gets bombed and it triggers this whole series of events to go and try and recover the crew or see what happens. The government hires up Gerard Butler, this captain who's out on a vacation, but they call him back in for one last mission. He's got to man a sub and find out what happened to the one that got bombed. This leads him to find out that the sub was bombed and there's this whole other conspiracy going on as well. There's a lot more to it, but basically the Russian president has been kidnapped and his government leader, one of his military guys, is trying to take over the country. So he starts this fake attack and he's trying to get a whole world war going between America and Russia by attacking these subs. That's the basic premise and everything goes off of that. You get to see lots of different angles. You get to see a lot of submarine action with Gerard Butler underwater with his crew and manning the boat and shooting torpedoes and stuff. And then above the water, there's a military operation, a covert team that's infiltrating Russia from the air and then they go through the woods and do their little spy kind of stuff. And then the third theater for this movie is the politics going on in Washington DC. There's a few scenes with the president but mostly there's some military guys discussing how they want to handle this. They're trying to stop the situation before it turns into a whole world war. So like I said this kind of harps back on the old Cold War era stuff. America versus Russia, capitalists versus communists but in the new modern era this is set in the present and it has that kind of flair to it like oh we don't want to start a world war. We already evolved the Cold War, and now this could kind of blow things up in the present. All in all, I think what separates this movie from others is the really good submarine action. There's been a few good sub movies over the years, but it's been a while. This is a good new submarine movie. He's got a new crew. You get to see them operate underwater, and then you get to see how they interact with other teams in the movie. There's the covert ops team. There's the Russian team, because there's two sides to Russia. There's the Russians that are trying to take over, the evil ones, but then there's the president and his inner circle who are trying to save Russia from this war. They don't want a war either. So yeah, it's really good submarine stuff, some good political things as well, a really great cast in this movie. The whole cast brings it together, starting with Gerard Butler, who mans the submarine, he's the captain. Then there's other cool people, like Gary Oldman is one of the head politicians, one of the head government military guys who's actually kind of pushing things to a war. He starts freaking out, but then the other people calm him down. There's uh, Linda Cardellini, who's this girl, she works for the NSA, she kind of does the information side of things, and then unfortunately there is a downside to the cast. Commons in the movie, our favorite SJW host and um, leftist presenter Commons in the movie, and he's ironically enough a really good soldier in this movie, which kind of contradicts his whole Black Lives Matter, I hate the government crap, but let's get past that. Let's focus on the movie. The movie goes over the top sometimes, and there's a few laughs in there, but it is pretty serious. It takes itself seriously, and it does a good job of delivering the action and the story beat by beat. The main thing I would say is it does drag a little bit. It could seem a little long. It's about two hours, which isn't too long as like the time, but it does feel long in there. There's a lot going on, so they have a lot of the story to tell, so I can't really, I don't know what they would cut out of it, but it did feel a little long. But by the end, the payoff and everything coming to a conclusion, it works out great. With all that said, let's go ahead and bring out the hot take meter. I'll easily give Hunter Killer 2.5 flames out of 5. Not quite a 3, not quite an above average movie, but right in the middle. It could have been better, but I think it was perfectly serviceable. I think it was great fun, good action. If you like military stuff, if you're interested in some 
submarine stuff or politics, America versus Russia, that kind of thing, you're certainly going to like it. I'll admit it's definitely not for everyone. Kind of a guy movie, kind of uh, maybe boring if you don't like that political stuff, if you don't like action movies. It could seem a little generic too, maybe like something you've seen before, but it does have a fresh take on it. It has that submarine side, so it has some new stuff to offer as well. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Hot Take, everyone. We'll see you next week to talk about Hollywood's latest movie.